out there, each of us expects the other to entertain expectations as one does it oneself. So all of us, and that's the basic of the social relation, that's what I claim at least, and from there I want to build uh, my theory about communication and codification of communication, eventually communic codification to the extent that we can have scientific discourse, scholarly discourse and scientific knowledge. The second part, I, I'll, not, I'll try to keep it short, the second part is about uh, the triple helix. Of course, the triple helix it, it tells first a story about Henry Edskwitz and how I, and I and how we set up this triple helix and actually as a compromise and that became clear because there were two versions of the triple helix and we had screech models which I call the institutional models and <clears throat> my interest in um, how a double helix can be extended to a triple helix and how it is then possible and this is work also with Inga uh, to create models where we can generate redundancy uh, against the era of time. Um, yeah, how do I just want to say that in a couple of words? Uh, it means that uh, there can be negative pockets of entropy. Uh, and how these negative pockets of entropy can compete and be assessed against each other. That's particularly in uh, chapter six, where I focus on Italy. Um, as an example, there are many of those nation studies. I'm, most of you will be aware of that, that uh, we have done that for a number of studies, but Italy was a recent one and was, is an interesting one because Italy is a knowledge-based economy to a high extent. And it also has a regional divide between the North and the South, and we can ask questions about that. The last one is a paper, which is actually a paper with Inga Ivanova, with Inga, uh, about the measurement of synergy. Inga, I last year gave that paper in Moscow, uh, so I can't give it again in Moscow next week. Or, uh, uh, and, and the issue there is how does synergy relate to interdisciplinarity? Um, most politicians, if they ask for interdisciplinarity for problem solving, mean that there should be synergy. And synergy, of course, is a doesn't presume that and all the partners are academic. So it relates also to the triple helix model and also to models of external de democratization of the sciences. In addition to writing this chapter, we, I also provide all the uh, computer routines so that people can easily measure synergy in any data set which can be modeled as a matrix. And most data sets are matrices or Excel sheets. So if you have in those Excel sheets units of analysis, rows or columns, and then you can measure all the interdisciplinary measures, interdisciplinarity measures, the Gini index, et cetera, et cetera, the Simpson index, the Rao Sterling index, but also synergy. It's computation intensive, so you should have a computer which you can turn on for a couple of days. <clears throat> then there's a third part, which is building on my work in uh, anticipatory systems, which is essentially related to that part because also in anticipatory systems, you have this notion of inversion of the time arrow. And inversion of the time arrow implies that you have negative entropy, or in other words, as we are saying it now, uh, calculus of redundancy. Uh, we are moving towards that. We have new notions about that. And <clears throat> again, uh, honor who has to be honored, and that's Inga. Um, I elaborate that, uh, I have elaborated that in the context of uh, the uh, meetings of the, on the computation of anticipatory systems, which have been uh, for a long time taking place in Belgium. Uh, now no longer, uh, and from that I have a set of equations, and my 
thesis is that, you know, let me first say there is a difference then, a distinction made between weak and strong anticipation. Weak anticipation is uh, the type of anticipation which we as individuals have. Uh, we entertain models of ourselves and play with those models in our mind in order to make best choices. And strong anticipation, and that's my thesis here, is the social system. It is a system which exists from expectations, which is built on expectations and reproduced in terms of expectations. And only a system which has no history uh, can do that. And I'll, I'll, I explain in the text why. Uh, so a biology is an historical system. It develops along a trajectory. A psychology has the, pro the option reflexively to reflect on one's history and then to give history a reinterpretation. A social system goes beyond that and can change history from the perspective of expectations. And this is elaborated, this is a strong claim of course, and it is in the end uh, an argument against monism. It is an argument in favor of the crucial role of reflexivity in social systems. First as at the individual level, as a weak anticipatory system, but then even more importantly, as interactions among reflections, which introduce this notion of uh, hyper inclusivity it is called. In, so recursive is with the flow, incursive is against the flow, and hyper incursive is with the option to choose among the two. Now that brings me to my summary and conclusions and to all the things which come thereafter like uh, indices. And that's the introduction to the book. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much for your kind introduction. I have actually read the, the earlier version of the, your book, right? The draft version of the, your book. Uh, yeah. yes, and then, you know, all I felt it was very much philosophical and as well as the, you know, the measurement issues. Was, and yeah, the measurement issues are in the articles. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I had written so many articles that I now had to write this book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, but, uh, this so, is always in the background in the articles, but it is not. The articles are more empirical. So there is here, there are empirical examples here, but the, the emphasis is not on the empirical side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, I have so many questions, but I do not want to ask these questions oh, yeah. during the, this, you know, time. But, uh, Luz, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, in, I like to have uh, just only one question related to the COVID-19 in Italy. No, you know, the, the, in the beginning of the COVID-19, you know, COVID infection was concentrated on the north area of the Italy. So yeah. is this, uh, does it have, you know, anything with uh, your chapter six? Like your chapter six also, you know, dealing with north south divide in Italy. So in sure, the sure, corona, sure. there's a corona divide in Italy, north and south divide. So can we find something in common? Yeah, so um, chapter six uh, is more or less about Italy has uh, regions, 20 regions, and it has a north-south divide. And the north-south divide can also be differently defined. It depends on whether you count north and south, or also the center around Rome as a separate region. And the question then is, the policy makers are always using the regions as units of analysis. Is that correct, or should science policy work with the north-south divide? And the conclusion is, of course, that, it, that they should, uh, and that they preferably they should have the one which also distinguishes the center. Uh, the division in Italy, um, people who are 
from Europe and particularly the, uh, from, among us from Italy will know that uh, Italy was till 1870, uh, 18, it's a bit more complex than 1870, but let's say till around 1870, two countries, one was occupied by the Spanish king, uh, the southern part, Naples as its capital, and the northern part is the more Western European part, uh, one could say, um, more modernization oriented. And the source of wealth in Italy, that's where the money is made, yeah? And then they also have uh, industrial districts, which are also very creative, but that's uh, again an older story. How this now relates to uh, COVID, of course, this research was done before COVID, uh, so I don't have COVID data in it. Um, to say speculatively, um, why was, you could say that Northern Italy is more like Western Europe, uh, the, the nor more Northern parts of, of Western Europe. The, we call it the banana, yeah? Which the banana goes from Rotterdam in the Netherlands through the Rhine Valley and then to Milan, yeah, as the as the center of the northern part of Italy. So that's a kind of uh, banana-shaped valley, you could say, or the Alps are in between it. And this part is then more more in line with each other. Uh, what ha the south is further away, so that the south was later, perhaps in that direction you can find some answers. Yeah? Han, you're okay. still there? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening, yeah, yeah, I'm with you all. Yeah, so I would say, if you see the, the north reacting different from the south, then usually the south is the exception. Okay. Okay. And the, it's also the exception in terms of innovation. There's uh, a nice paper by Lucio Bigiero where he explains why the South is the exception. Because in the South, uh, and that also has to do with Asia, in the North, um, Italy is so for networked that if, they, if someone has a problem, you go to the tennis yard and you find someone to solve the problem, an entrepreneur. Um, well, in the South, you always have first to ask in your family. So it's okay, more okay. close it's to really society. Correct. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so anybody from the, you know, pro? Anybody, any thought, any feedback or any anything would like to say about uh, his book and his... Thank about you so much for all your attention. Oh. Yeah, all about, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've got I've got a question. I've got a question. How would how would you recommend? Um, what should we do with this book? In the sense that, um, would you think that is it? What would be the audience for it among our students, for example? Like for example, graduate students, or wh who do you envision the audience for it? I know that some of my grad, but it's a, it's um, very it's very um. It's somewhat beyond some of the reading that ability of some of my Japanese undergraduate students, but I think it could work with um, some of my graduate students. So, um, what do you envision? Who do you envision to be the the audience for it, and uh, how can we help to, you know, promote it? Help you promote it. Thank you. That's a very nice offer. Um, yes. Uh, I write articles more or less because I know my articles are well read and my books less so, but uh, because the books are too, by uh, many people felt as too complex. But um, in the longer term, uh, my book, my 1995 book, The Challenge of Psychometrics, still sells very well. <laughs> so that adds up. It is the integration which you have. You have to take the surface uh, beyond, uh, below the curve. So I know that uh, someone once told me there are 300 people in the world who read your stuff, Lute. Uh, 
many of them read lots of it, yeah, and yeah, uh, how that works, yeah. It will be ma mainly graduate students, I suppose, here where I don't add, and um, graduate okay. programs, and perhaps people will find, uh, I think that's out of my hand as, as, as mm -hmm. an author. I remember 20 years ago, one of my professors, you know, um, had us in a seminar, had us read a book on cybernetics. And we each took turns, this is in his seminar, we each took turns um, presenting the chapters. The book was in Japanese, so it was really rough. The concepts are very, very deep. So I'm looking forward to reading your book and, and particularly this, this you know, part one, the social cybernetics of scientific knowledge. I think that this is very, very interesting. So I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah, I did the same in uh, 1991, I think. 1990, Luhmann uh, published Die Wissenschaft der Gesellschaft, and that's in English, The Science mm -hmm. of Society. And then I organized a colloquium in the Netherlands uh, for, mm -hmm. uh, and people came and each week we did in, uh, the chapter, so it's the same idea, because it's okay. sometimes different. Yeah, but that's long ago, again. Mm. Yeah, Lutz, if you could provide a preprint version of your book, you know, we could you know, be happy you know, to read through. <laughs> we, we, you know, we cannot afford it, uh, you know. <laughs> no, it will be, uh, don't worry, it will be in Springer Link, and there it is in principle accessible, yeah, mm -hmm. and then PDF files will circulate, begin to circulate around, because you know Springer Link, I suppose. Yeah, it's from Springer, and you can freely access, if the university has a uh, subscription. Uh, and I'm trying my best, I'm working on that today, to see whether I can still get something open access. Okay, okay, we'll yeah. see. I see the problem. I, I don't want you to pay that much money. <laughs> I, well, I, can my, 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 I can ask my university library to purchase your book, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's why they make them so, so expensive. I think it is uncivilized how they do this. Because they, did it behind, they did it behind my back. More or less. <laughs> they didn't contact me. <laughs> yeah. 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 And probably, you know, the, you know, if we have an you know, opportunity to review your book in our journal, you know, the, actually the professor, you know, Tak Kawasaki, and she is our book review editor. So, you know, if we have opportunity to review your book in our, in the, our journal, it would be, you know, greatly appreciated. In that case, Han, I will give you it as a gift. <laughs> in, in, in that case, you know, I think you know Inga Ivanova, you know, probably she, you know, might like to, you know, you know, review the your book for the whole journal. I I don't know, but you know, Inga is among <laughs> the acknowledgements, and uh, we will see. We can work this out between the between us, among us. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else from the other members? I'm particularly interested in uh, what people will think. Inga has read it uh, uh, about the derivations in the third part, because I claim there that I need eight equations for modeling anticipatory systems. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to hearing what people think about that. That has not been published. Okay, thank you so much Inga, for all you your time. Probably Inga, she is having uh, some, you know, network problem. Hello, I, I got my name, but I don't know if you can hear me because I can hear only uh, up to 50% because of the internet connection. Can you hear me? I can't hear it. Can you say it once more? Uh... Inga, would you please speak a little bit up so I cannot hear you either? <laughs> but I don't know uh, if you can hear me because uh, some. Sometimes I can't hear, I hear what you're telling about. Okay, Inga, 
I, I we're seeing yeah, no, it's uh, okay. your, your screen is freezing a little there's mm -hmm. quite a delay like a couple seconds delay and it's sort of your screen is a little bit jerky so maybe try try turning your video off yes. and yes. then try talk yeah try talking and then let's see if we can hear you better do you want to say something inga yeah i can hear several words and then lesson Okay, your voice is stronger now. I, we can, can you hear I, I, me well? Yeah, I can hear you better now. Okay, here, I'm turning off my video too. Inga, I'm not perhaps sure you should in the microphone. Home right now, uh, I'm at another place. Um, for people who have some questions with uh, COVID tests, and uh, here I have a really unstable internet connection. Now we hear you. Now we hear you. Yeah, because I have two PCR tests. Uh, one is positive and another one is negative. Uh, that's why I have to move to another place. Oh. I have to spend here for 14 days approximately. And now I'm waiting for the doctor. Mm, the situation is quite, um, uh, not quite good because uh, one test was positive and another one was negative. Oh, I'm so sorry for but you. I'm feeling well. <laughs> now you're feeling well. If you can hear me well, I also would like to say that uh, I had the pleasure to read this book. And, uh, work in with Luta for some chapters and or papers. And actually, it's very interesting. It's what a uh, real pleasure to read. Uh, very interesting to uh, read about self organization, complex social economic system, about nonlinear dynamics. Uh, really, went very interesting book. If, and if you will have a chance to read, yeah. let's read it. Oh, Inga, I'm going to ask you to write somewhere a review. Okay, Inga, I'm very sorry to hear that. I'll yeah. do it. Ah, you'll do it. Okay, great. Okay, Han, I leave you here. Thank yeah, you yeah, so I'm much. very sorry to hear that, and but I'm very happy to you know to see you are here, and then I think we have to wrap up. So you know, Luch. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for coming, and then it was very nice, you know, to see you, you know, <laughs> face to face, remotely. Yeah, it is nice to, after so many years, to to meet each other again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think this time zone works, you know, for both, you know, people. So okay, so I see you. Have later. a nice evening, okay. and yeah. see you later. Bye. Okay, so we are finishing now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you very Goodbye. much for your talk. Thank you. Thank I'm looking you. forward to your book. I'm not sure how I get this, Goodbye. Thank get you. this closed down. Thank you. I will finish the meeting. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you.